In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Puppet Pals HD. Uh, in my opinion, this is uh, one of the best apps we have on our iPads. The first thing you want you to get your students to do is to hit um, the home button and to search for Puppet. They can type Puppet or part of it in. Um, two apps will come up. Um, the Puppet Pals HD app, and that one has the director's chair that you can see there. Um, it's not on the screen, but our iPads also have a regular Puppet Pals app. You don't want to pick that one because the uh, Puppet Pals HD has more characters and backdrops. Once Puppet Pals opens up, the first thing you want to do is select more characters. The first thing students will do now is select which kind of puppet play they want to uh, create. Um, there are plenty of choices on the left side there. If there is a check mark on their choice, it means those characters and backdrops have, have already been downloaded. If uh, there is no check, then they will need to select that and install it. And to do that, all students need to do is to hit the install button and it takes about 15 seconds. Once it's installed, you'll see a check mark there and a little seal on the corner that says installed. At that point, you want to hit the back button right here, and that will take you back to the home page in Puppet Pals. Uh, starting from the beginning again, now you have your characters downloaded and your backdrops downloaded that you want to use. Press to start, and that will take you to the place or your students to the place where they can start building their puppet play. So to get started with the play, um, students need to choose their actors. Uh, one thing that's really interesting in um, the HD version is students can add their own actors from photos. So they could take photos on the iPad and choose, uh, choose to use those. Uh, one thing that um, students need to be aware of is depending on who used the iPad before some actors may already be checked off or chosen that's um, real easy to undo that students just uh, touch the character and the check mark will go away so they can start fresh and again they have up to eight actors that they can choose students simply tap the characters they want they get checked off and then they hit next at this point, students get to choose a backdrop. They have a choice of up to five backdrops. And once again, if backdrops have been selected from a, uh, a previous um, puppet play, students simply need to, to touch those backdrops to uncheck them. So the students just have to click the backdrops and they will be checked off. And at that point, they have selected their characters and their backdrops and it's time to start making the play itself. They would hit next to move to that step. So creating a puppet play now is really easy. All students have to do is hit the record button. Anytime they're recording whatever shows in the screen, in this screen right here, okay, anything in there um, is what appears on the screen. Students uh, can pause it by pressing that button again and uh, they build a play. If they want to choose a different backdrop, all they have to do is touch the cord there and a new backdrop will come into the screen. So uh, by selecting a different backdrop, students once again just need to make sure they're recording and pausing and they can build different scenes. So this is an example of another backdrop. As long as students are recording and pausing using that button, they can build their play with that. One thing that's interesting is students can increase the size of characters. Characters can grow bigger and smaller just by pinching their fingers back and forth. Um, finally, once the play is all put together, students need to hit this button, and that uh, gives them the option to save it. A title box will come up next. Students uh, give their puppet play a title or their names, and then press Save. Once they have sa saved their play, uh, this screen will come up telling them they've sa saved it successfully and uh, they will then have a chance to play back or export the play. So
So once plays are saved, this box comes up, and again, there is the export and the play button. The export button allows you to send the play, to email it out, to send it to a Dropbox. Another option on this screen is to edit the play, and that simply gives students the option to delete the play. Um, one thing that's great about Puppet Plays is you can do them in one setting, uh, where students um, build a play really quickly, or you can do a longer project with it, where students storyboard, select characters, and in those cases, obviously, the plays will be a little more thorough. Um, Puppet Plays can be used from early primary all the way to grade 7, and I think it's a great way to have students uh, create a story um, and look at story elements, and uh, it's incredibly engaging. I uh, hope you enjoy using it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask myself or Lori.